This video gives an introduction to the cross product of two vectors. The cross product is defined for vectors in three dimensions. If we're given two vectors in terms of their components, then we can define the cross product as the determinant of the following expression. We put the vectors i, j, and k at the top, and then we put the components of vector a and the components of vector b in that order. Then we compute the determinant as we would with any matrix. One way of doing this is by expanding along the top row. By that, I mean we take the first entry here, i, and we multiply it by the determinant of the submatrix a2, a3, b2, b3, that we would get by crossing out the row and column that i is in. Then we subtract the vector j times the submatrix, the determinant of the submatrix a1, a3, b1, b3, that we would get by crossing off the row and column that j is in. Finally, we add the vector k times the determinant of the submatrix a1, a2, b1, b2, that we would get by crossing off the row and column that k is in. Notice that the positive and negative signs alternate, plus i, minus j, plus k. Now we evaluate these little two by two submatrix determinants by just multiplying down the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right, and then subtracting the other diagonal. In other words, we get i times a2, b3, minus b2, a3, minus j, times a1, b3, minus b1, a3, plus k, times a1, b2, minus b1, a2. If we don't like the negative j here, we can factor it through and rewrite our cross product as follows. I'll rewrite it one more time using component notation and cleaning it up to make the a's always before the b's in each of these products. So this fairly complicated formula is the formula for the cross product of A cross B, but as we'll see, it's worth the trouble because the cross product has some very nice features. First, let's get a little more familiarity with the cross product by computing an example with numbers. So if I want to find A cross B for these two vectors, I'm going to take the determinant of I, J, K, and I'll just fill in the components of my vectors here, and now I'll expand out along the top row, and I get i times the determinant of 2, 3, negative 1, 10, because that's what I get when I cross out the row and column for i. It just leaves that submatrix. And now I do minus j times the submatrix I get by crossing out that column and that row. So that's 1, 3, 5, 10, and then plus k times the term of the submatrix I get by crossing out that row and that column. So that's 1, 2, 5, negative 1. And now I'll compute the determinants of the submatrices. So this is 2 times 10 is 20 minus negative 3. So that's, I'll just write 20 minus negative 3 minus j. Here I have 10 minus 15 and I have plus k times negative 1 minus 10. And that simplifies to i times 23, or 23i, 23 uh, plus 5j minus 11k. So my cross product vector is given by that answer. I'd like to list some important properties of cross product. I won't prove the properties here, but I will prove them in a later video. The first property has to do with the length of the cross product vector. If theta is the angle between the vectors a and b, so I'll draw that, here's a and maybe here's b, and theta is this angle here, we want to be sure to choose theta to be the smaller angle between a and b, the angle that's between 0 and pi radians. 
So in the picture, we want theta to be this angle and not the larger angle around here. So if we do that, then it turns out that the length of the vector a cross b is equal to the length of a times the length of b times sine of theta. Notice that when theta is between 0 and pi, sine of theta will be positive. So this expression will be positive. So it's at least plausible that it could represent the length of the vector a cross b, which is also a positive number. So this property tells us about the length of a cross b. Now the next two properties are going to tell us about the direction. First of all, it turns out that the vector a cross b is perpendicular to both a and b. So as a picture, if this is the vector a and this is the vector b, and here's the plane that contains both those vectors, then the vector a cross b must be perpendicular, sticking straight out of that plane somewhere. And even if we specify the length of a vector perpendicular to a and b, as we do in this formula, there's still two options, because the vector could point in this direction, or it could point in the opposite direction. Well, it turns out that the direction of a cross b is given by the right-hand rule. What I mean by that is if I arrange the two vectors so that they share an initial point like they do in this picture, and I put the palm of my right hand at that common initial point, I point the fingers of my right hand in the direction of A, and then I curl my fingers towards the direction of B. If I do that with my right hand, then whatever direction my thumb ends up pointing, that's the direction of A cross B. So in this case, A cross B should be pointing up out of the plane. And if instead my vectors are arranged like this, now when I curl the fingers of my right hand, in the direction from A towards B, my thumb ends up sticking down out of the plane, so A cross B will be in this direction instead. These three properties of cross product give us a way to characterize cross product geometrically in terms of length and direction. Finally, let's use these geometric facts and formulas in this example. We have two vectors, vector A and vector B, whose magnitudes are given. We're also given an angle of 210 degrees between them. We want to find the magnitude of A cross B and decide if it's directed up out of the page or down into the page. Well, to figure out whether it's directed up or down, we can use the right-hand rule. So I'm going to put the palm of my hand at the common initial point of A and B, put the fingers of my right hand in the direction of A, curl my fingers towards B, and when I do that, the thumb of my right hand points up out of the page. So I'm going to circle out of the page, and I invite you to try it yourself. Now, to find the length of A cross B, we can use the formula from the previous page. It says that this is the length of A times the length of B times sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors but it's got to be an angle between 0 and 180 degrees. So it's not the 210 angle. It's this angle right here, which is 360 minus 210. So theta is 150 degrees. Now, if I plug all my information into this formula, the length of A is 5, and the length of B is 10, and that's times sine of 150 degrees. Sine of 150 is 1 half, so I have 50 times a half, which is 25. So A cross B is the vector that points straight up out of the page with a length of 25 units. In this video, I gave a formula for A cross B in terms of components, and I also gave a way to think about A cross B geometrically. A cross B is perpendicular to A and B, with its direction given by the right-hand rule. In addition, the length of A cross B is equal to the length of A times the length of B times sine theta, where theta is the angle between 0 and 180 degrees 
between A and B. These facts about length and direction completely determine the vector A cross B.